When I first heard about Bullet Train, I thought it was a joke. I mean, how in the world would they make this into an action movie? Now, this definitely has action and a lot of comedy, but does it work? Five assassins aboard a fast-moving bullet train find out their missions have something in common. Brad Pitt leads a cast of assassins made up of Aaron Taylor Johnson, Brian Tyree Henry, Joey King, Andrew Koji, Bad Bunny, Zazie Beetz, and Hiroyuki Sanada. Now, this is almost non-stop action that's infused with a ton of witty comedy. Now, all of the assassins are on this bullet train, and each with their individual goals. But what they find out is that they're all connected in one way or another. Now, there's a certain feeling of the movie Clue in this, where we have all of these characters that go by code names like Ladybug, Prince, Lemon, Tangerine. And while the main arc of the story isn't a mystery, there is a small bit of intrigue that plays out throughout the narrative, and our characters are then constantly on the move to try and find the piece that they're all looking for. Pitt is phenomenal as a guy who's had a sort of an epiphany, and he really isn't into violence anymore. Now, he's all about peace and positivity, but he's also got a job to do of recovering an item. Now, I really enjoyed Pitt's mannerisms and the conversations that he's having with his handler over the phone. His sly wit and excellent comedic timing shine, and there are brief moments where I saw the zaniness of his 12 Monkeys character come through in just some facial expressions and movements. As the story progresses, we get to meet the characters, and I loved the title treatments that we see for each person. It feels very much like a graphic novel come to life, where the screen will freeze for just a moment and the character's name will then flash on the screen. I also really enjoyed how when we get the backstory on our different characters, it's told in very quick succession. The narrative doesn't waste time or even drag out the introductions. We just get to see the pertinent actions and then bits of dialogue that inform who a character is and what their motivation or intentions could be. Now, Brad Pitt is clearly the lead in this, but also the rest of the cast gets massive moments to shine. Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson just kill it with their banter. I mean, they're feisty and their dynamic is awesome to watch. And they feed off of each other, building each other's performance. And they're also then able to elicit really some surprising compassion, even though they're bad guys, or maybe at least they're anti-heroes. Now, there's some moments in the cinematography between them that were executed so well. They're having a conversation at one point and they're facing each other on the train. Now the camera switches back and forth between them with each of the characters then centered in the frame and looking directly into the camera. It was a great effect to include us in the conversation, but it also just looked amazing. I mean, they also then contribute to the comedy of the film with sarcastic and snarky comebacks between them. Joey King is frustratingly great to watch. I mean, we can tell that she's not all she appears to be, but it's aggravating when the other characters can't pick up on it. Her pouty facial expressions and that aw shucks type of persona work to create an innocent appearing savage. The rest of the assassins and characters that we see have much smaller roles and are in the film for less time, but they're still entertaining to watch as well. And they help to add twists and complications to what Pitt is trying to accomplish, and usually also get to contribute massively to the crazy action. Because this is all happening on a train, the fights and battles, they're all close quarters and confined. Now, while a lot of this does employ quick cuts, there are also a bunch of sequences that show us more of the scope and the scale of a fight, which then allows us to see how good the fight choreography is. There's a lot of physicality to what the characters go through, and there's a good level of realism to how they just get winded and tired during a battle. Now, that's not to say that a lot of the action isn't exaggerated, because I'm not really sure how any person would survive most of what these people endure. But ultra-realism, it's not the point. I wanted to see crazy action, and that's what was delivered. And with all of that insane action, some of the special effects, they're just not all that special. Especially towards the end where the carnage goes to the extreme. Now, in these moments, a lot of what's happening looks pretty fake. But because I was already so invested in the action, the wonkiness didn't pull me out of the story, even though it was very noticeable. Now, towards the end of the film, we get a villain exposition monologue that explains all of the motivations and impetus for what's been going on. Now, this was probably the weakest point in the storytelling, but I'm not really sure how else that they would have given us all of the context in such a short amount of time. And it's not like the exposition dump was bad, it just came across as obvious and unoriginal. And now I'm talking about the technique here, not the actual story. I enjoyed how everything fit together. Now, if you've not seen the most recent or the full trailer, I'd recommend not watching it before seeing the movie. The narrative sets up this air of awe and dread around a certain antagonist. And if you've not seen the trailer, you don't know who this is. And I love that the suspense built all throughout the movie at who this could possibly be. Now, if you have seen the trailer, all of that goes out the window, which I think is a shame. 
Now, something else that was an issue for me, and it could have just been the theater that I saw this in, but there were times where the audio mix made it difficult to hear portions of dialogue. In the beginning of the film, Brad Pitt is talking on the phone, and I was struggling to understand all that he was saying. Part of it was that he was kind of mumbling, but there are then also a lot of ambient noises that seem to overpower his dialogue some. And the same goes for other characters later on in the movie where their dialogue competes with the score, making it really hard to discern all of the words. Now again, this could have been the audio in my theater, but it was an IMAX presentation, and those are typically EQ'd appropriately for the room. The pace of this is quick and driving, filled with energy that rarely lessens the intensity. And there are a few quieter moments where a bit more drama comes into play, but the pace doesn't slow down, and I never felt the time, despite this being a little over two hours. I really enjoyed the color palettes that were used in this also. There are teals and oranges, along with bright purples and pinks, and each of them setting a particular tone for the scene. Now, sometimes these were to convey warmth, and other times hyperness or energy, and they were effective in creating a mood for what was going to go down. Now, there's an uncredited cameo in this that I thought was awesome, so be on the lookout for that. And there's also a small mid credit scene, so just don't get up and rush right out as soon as the credits begin to roll. Overall, Bullet Train is a thrill ride of excitement, action, and comedy. The cast complements each other with their wit and sarcasm, and then duke it out in some awesome fight sequences. While there might be some audio mix issues, and I would have liked to have a different way to provide villain exposition, the story as a whole is incredibly engaging and had me laughing out loud many times as I sat on the edge of my seat with anxious energy. This is a movie that I will certainly be buying and then watching over and over because the cast is phenomenal, the fights are brutal, and the comedy is sincere. There's sex, brief nudity, a ton of profanity, and almost non-stop violence. I give Bullet Train four and a half out of five couches. So what's an action comedy that you've seen lately that you really enjoyed? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.